Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living and those who help make a healthy living lifestyle achievable. I'm Fred Zucker, your host, and we're coming to you, as always, from the lovely campus of Parker University, located in Dallas, Texas. Today, our special guest is Dr. Jarrett Browning. Dr. Browning, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Zucker. Dr. Browning is a Park University College of Chiropractic graduate of the class of 2013. Seems like only yesterday. I'm sure that you walked across that stage, Dr. Browning. Is that correct? It feels like it. I'm sure. A whirlwind. Sure. A whirlwind. Dr. Browning is a member of the Park University Alumni Association Board of Directors. He is also chair of the fundraising committee of that institution, that group of people who represent the alumni, some 6,000-plus strong alumni community of Parker University. And they are involved in, in a fundraising effort, which is very exciting, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But first, let's learn a little bit about Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, how did you come to chiropractic and to Parker University? How did that happen? Well, Dr. Zucker, it was uh, my upbringing actually came through gymnastics. And so I began at the age of seven. And as a gymnast, you really begin to understand the ability of your body to go right. beyond its limits. Absolutely. Just watching the Olympics the last few weeks, it's amazing what they can do. Unbelievable what they can do with their bodies. And so I began getting this awareness of what was capable and what was powerful in my body. And then other things that may not necessarily work quite to the standard that I would want for them. And it was in uh, my undergrad program that I was studying health and exercise science. Mm -hmm. And I met a friend there that was really instrumental in me directing myself to chiropractic and he looked at me and he said you know Jared you could really excel as a chiropractor and at that time I was thinking about some different curriculum different programs and I I passed it off for about two years and then you know just out of the blue he began saying well why don't you just tour a chiropractic school take a look yeah just take a look Mm -hmm. so two weeks later It was in April, I visited the Parker campus. And it was on that tour, it was actually a Friday afternoon, and if anybody's been here on a Friday afternoon, the energy's a little bit dull. It's quieter on Friday afternoon. People have things to do for the weekend. That's true, absolutely. And even with that quiet nature of the campus, the the love and the family and the presence of what was possible with chiropractic was so readily there Mm -hmm. and it was captivating to me and I thought if there's a profession that encompasses that and they're that welcoming and they're that um, just at ease with all the study and knowing that they're going to make a huge difference in somebody difference in somebody's life that's the program for me yeah and great I visited two other campuses after that, just to make sure, one, that I was selecting the right institution for me. Good. And two, that if this was the same premise that was amongst the chiropractic schools and in the profession, and it actually was. It was really, really remarkable to visit those other campuses. And even when recruiters would call me back and say, well, what's your thought? And I would say, well, I'm putting in my application to Parker and want to attend Parker. They reached out and gave congratulations and thanks for attending an orientation or a a campus tour. Right. And so I really felt that this was the true premise of chiropractic is this idea of loving service, which our founder, Dr. Jim, speaks so highly about. Absolutely. Well, had you been involved in chiropractic yourself personally at, at some point during your gymnastics career? Did you have injuries or anything like that that created a contact with chiropractic? Actually, no. It was one of the only professions I wasn't in contact with. Uh, A funny story, my dad, when I was a little boy, he worked at a department store and he told me, I was six at that time, and he told me that a lady had come in to work and her neck was like this. And I Mm. said, well, what was it about, dad? And he said, well, she went to go see a chiropractor. And I had no other questions. That was it. That was it. And so I think that played into a little bit of my resistance, Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that. Understandably. And who knows what the healing process was for that lady. Who knows. And uh, so we just didn't use that service for myself while I was a growing gymnast. And 
my first adjustment was actually here at the the Parker College of Chiropractic at that time clinic uh, just across the street right. and life changing for me because I had I had experienced a lot of uh, trouble in my jaw mm-hmm. and I had had a surgery just prior to attending school here and that first adjustment I felt ease hmm. restored to right. my jaw and I thought if that's the first thing that begins to heal up I have no clue what else is possible right who knows what can be done beyond that which is so what so many people discover about chiropractic when they first encounter chiropractors in practice and the amazing benefit they can re- they can receive from that contact well, your experience as a student here at Parker is not that far removed. We've just started a new trimester this week. And if you had any words of wisdom for these new trimester one students who are just beginning their careers at Parker, what would those words be, Dr. Browning? What would you tell them uh, based upon your experience, your, your many years of experience in college here and beyond? Engage yourself. Engage yourself. Yeah. Engage yourself in the classroom by sitting close to the front Engage yourself in beginning to know the faculty because they're here for you and for the evolution of the profession. And engage yourself in the multitude of events that come through Parker, whether that be assemblies, Parker seminars, uh, the CE hours that you can get while attending, something that might interest you, animal chiropractic. Exactly. Very popular with our students. Well, that's fascinating because so many of the students come here and they're so, they're so caught up in the study itself that I think they don't take full advantage of all the things that are offered here, the speaker series and assemblies, all the things you mentioned. It really is important to do that as much as you can. And certainly you've done well beyond Parker. You have uh, continued to be very much involved in the university, which we really appreciate very much. Thank you. Going back to what you said about the engagement, one of the things I tell the new students to do to make sure that their professors like them is that when the professors make eye contact with them, they should do this. They should go. Because what does that tell the professor? I'm listening. I'm listening. And professors love that, Dr. Browning. They love that. Speaking as a professor myself, they love that engagement to think that they're making a difference with their students. Well, you're involved in a special project here with the Alumni Association Board of Directors. We have uh, received a, a device here at Parker University to assist our students in learning to do their, their basic chiropractic intervention, the adjustment. It's called the Force Sensing Table Technology, the FSTT, the Foxtrot Sierra Tango Tango, as they say in the military. And we have one of those. I think we're one of the first chiropractic colleges in, the, in America to have one. And your, your project you've taken on as part of the leadership of the Alumni Association Board is to find another of those tables to assist our students because this first one has been oversubscribed. People love it, the students love it, the alumni love it, the faculty love it. Tell us about your experience with this new device. Well, it was uh, interesting to me because so much of our experience in chiropractic is kinesthetic. And growing up as a gymnast, I knew that you know a coach would mold my body into a way that I could uh, make myself more into that skill. And then that's when video technology began to progress and you could then watch your skill and almost self-coach. Right. Uh, And so my time at Parker was much the the old-fashioned way of the professor would come by and he would mold us or she would mold us and allow us to experience what an adjustment might need to feel like. Mm -hmm. And then when this force sensing table showed up on campus, I became curious as to what it could how it could extend the ability or read ability for us to teach, or maybe even fast track teaching. And so the first time that I sensed it actually, it was fascinating because there was so much objective data that came out of it That's right. that I was blown away. You can actually read how deep you your adjustment, it. and right. you can see it, right. how fast it is, what the vector is. And before that, you know, a person that's laying on the table may not be aware of where those forces are going in the body because we would get feedback before. Sure. Uh, This actually puts it in a line graph and it allows you to see the precise force that you're putting in and it blew my mind. 
And what blew it even more was when I watched a new student, a try one student, begin to take their first adjustments on it. Mm. And to see them starting out almost not knowing where to put their hands, not knowing how to lean over, not knowing, you know, just almost just... Just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. And then watch five minutes later, and they looked like a very skilled adjuster. That quickly. It made that much difference. It was so fast. Well, that's what I hear from my colleagues here, my faculty colleagues. They say it's just an incredible teaching device. And I'm sure from the student perspective, you learn so much more quickly. And with such greater precision, it's got to be a wonderful teaching and learning tool. And that's what we have invested this idea for the Force Sensing Table fundraising committee is knowing that the more of these we have, the better the learning outcomes are going to be for the students and actually probably the happier the teachers are going to be. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it'll be easier for them to have the students learn the techniques that they need to learn to refine them. Once they have the basics, they can move up the levels of, uh, of uh, the, pr- the practice that they need to do. So that's what it's got to be all about. I mean, just a, a wonderful device for learning and teaching. Now, there are some opportunities coming up that uh, alumni may, who have not actually had a chance to be hands-on with the FSTT to do so. Uh, the Parker Seminar in Dallas is coming up in October, yes. and I know there are going to be some opportunities for them to, to actually see the table in operation and in some cases to actually use it themselves. I think that's going to be a great opportunity. What do you think about that? It's tremendous. I mean, yeah. Really, it's it's a little bit nerve-wracking when you come in and yeah. you think about it like, am I really... How good am I? Yeah, how good am right. I? Right. And a little bit of the ego comes into play. And then if you could just step back and say, you know, this is just giving me some feedback. Right, it's just a device to help me learn, improve my technique. Letting me know how good I am right now. And if I can get any better... How would the people that are laying on my tables on a daily basis going to improve? Right. But there's that competitive streak that comes out a little bit, I imagine, when you've got your colleagues, maybe former classmates around, and you can see those numbers come up on the screen. I'm sure there's some of that uh, former gymnast that comes back to you, and you think, I can do this really well. I'll show them I can do it really well. Something like that, I'm sure. That's the way it goes. But people can make a donation to this to the project that you've undertaken with the Alumni Association Board, correct? Absolutely. So we, the initial donation was $333, which is really significant in chiropractic with the triune of life that mm-hmm. the chiropractic has, as well as the 33 principles of chiropractic. Right. So we found that to be really substantial in, in honoring chiropractic in that. But really, any amount that is um, where you deem capable of donating is completely accepted. Definitely. And people can donate online if they like. Uh, They can send something directly to us if they wish. Go to the website and they can click on a Give to Parker button and find it very easy to make a donation to the FSTT, the Force Sensing Table Technology. Well, I hope that you'll be able to come to to the uh, Parker Seminar in Dallas. It's going to be a big, big opportunity for alumni to see the campus. As you know, we're going to be moving Dr. Jim's statue to a more prominent place on campus. We'll have an unveiling of the statue, and it's going to be really, really nice because the campus area around the statue is going to be renovated. It's in that process right now. By October 13th, when we have the uh, Alumni Awards celebration, that will be done, and the campus will be resplendent. It's going to be beautiful. So we hope that all our alumni in the area and beyond will be able to come in and, and take part in that, in that program. That'll be exciting to see. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Browning, we really appreciate you coming in today to talk with us about, uh, about this uh, wonderful device that we have here at Parker and the possibility of adding to that. We hope that you'll come back again and see us uh, another time on To Your Health. And our viewers, we hope that you'll come back to more To Your Health. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.